literally stuck in the chair. What's up everybody, Coach Rob here, back with another video. Hope your training is going well. Hope your summer is going well. At the recording of this particular video, it is the dead of summer here in beautiful Western North Carolina. And uh, it's going well. I've got a camping trip coming up, so I'm pretty excited about that. And it's the very first camping trip where I get to take my five-year-old grandson, which is not going to be relaxing at all, but I've psyched myself up for it. I have this opportunity to have one of these trips with my grandson. Now, my whole family's going. Well, when I say whole family, I mean my wife and my daughter. But my grandson's going for the first time, his first camping trip, first time going with us, and that's something we do a lot. This is the first opportunity that I have to really, like, have a few days to, like, impart that grandfatherly wisdom on a young man. You know, in an age where kids today, it's all about screens and, you know, superheroes and, you know, all these distractions behind tablets and computers and televisions. And I'm going to get this kid out in the woods for about three full days and yeah, three days. And it's going to be about cooking over a fire, sleeping in a tent swimming in a river you know it's going to be awesome L looking at bugs whittling with knives you know all that you know outdoorsy bull snap so i'm excited about that so that's been on my mind i just thought i'd share that with you uh maybe i'll shoot some video when i'm out there and you can enjoy some of the highlights of my very unrelaxing primitive primal camping trip with a five-year-old so anyway today's video i've got a lot of people cutting right now shredding clients that i work with and i'm helping them through the process and i'm going to share with you a little hack that i like to use that works extremely well when you're trying to really get shredded now, in a recent video that I just posted talking about carbohydrate refeeds, uh, carbohydrates, you know, carbohydrate refeeds and carbs around training, I mentioned that sometimes that can be a very useful tool to, you know, bump you out of a stall or a, you know, um, a, a stalemate kind of a situation where things aren't quite going so well. Uh, to kind of get the body working again, it's kind of like throwing gas on the fire, and that's one of the benefits of having a carb refeed or using some carbohydrates around your hard training sessions. Now, this is kind of the opposite end of the spectrum. And I kind of like to use both of these strategically when I'm working with a client or even myself, if I'm trying to get really, really lean for say, summer. Um, and this is called, what I call anyway, a protein fast. And that's just what I've always called it. And I've been doing it since the 90s. Now, in the ketogenic nutrition world, in the carnivore world, it seems like that, that group that have kind of hijacked fasting, more specifically intermittent fasting, and kind of made it their own for some reason. And that's fine. Um, I'm not a huge advocate of fasting for the hard training athletes. I think it has its place, and it really falls into that category that I often talk about, that if it's working for you, then keep doing what you're doing. But if you feel like something might be amiss and it's not optimal, maybe revisit excessive intermittent fasting protocols because they may not be the best approach if you're trying to put on lean mass or preserve lean mass. It has its place, but some people take it to excess and they think, and I think it's misguided, that intermittent fasting is some sort of a fat loss miracle, and it's not. Uh, it does have some advantages, but that, again, is another video. Now, what I'm referring to is a protein fast. Unfortunately, sometimes with excessive fasting, especially those any long-term fasters out there that might do like a 24-hour fast or, or push it into like 36 hours or something like that, uh, it can be detrimental in terms of it can be muscle wasting. 
And there are studies out there that prove that, you know, reputable studies. Um, and sometimes chronic intermittent fasting uh, for the heavy lifter or the person that's training hard uh, may not be the most advantageous approach if you're trying to change body composition, burn fat, and retain, save the hard earned muscle that you've worked so hard in the gym for. But if you're in an energy deficit, or if you want to call it a caloric deficit, and you're trying to go through a cut, and you're trying to really lean out, yeah, um, it's, you have to do that in order to get really, really peeled. And I'm talking about like, you know, six pack abs, shredded, peeled, veiny, vascular, you know, carved out of wood kind of lean. Um, sometimes when you get deep into that deficit and you're deep into that cut, things can kind of stall out. You'll hit that dreaded plateau. And I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. So again, just to reiterate, there's a couple of strategies that I use to work through those plateaus and keep the fire burning. It's kind of like throwing kindling on a fire to, to sort of reset your metabolic thermostat to keep things moving in the right direction to bump your body out of that homeostasis mode and convince it that all is well, you're not starving to death, and you can continue to burn off that excess body fat. And of course, as mentioned, we want to retain that lean muscle. So a protein fast, for me, is a, for lack of a better example, it's a, I will call it a version of what you may know as a protein sparing modified fast. Uh, a protein sparing modified fast um, really, you know, is kind of what the kids these days are calling, you know, a super hard cut. It's what many physique competitors and bodybuilders would do like back in the 90s or even before in those late stages of a hard cut right before a competition where they would really, you know, not only lower carbohydrate very, very low to get super peeled, but they would also bring their fat down quite a bit as well. Uh, but they would always keep their protein high. And a protein sparing modified fast is a definitely a dieting hack where you would do extremely high intake of protein, which is fine. And of course you would keep your carbohydrates extremely low and you would keep your fat really low. And then typically it's often described as a, as a deep caloric deficit, which I'm not a big fan of. There are some versions out there that call for like a 900 calorie protein sparing modified fast. I think that's irresponsible and unnecessary. Um, but most protein sparing, protein sparing modified fast, just, just to, you know, Keep this simple, high protein, low carb, low fat for a period of time. And if you're going to do a traditional protein sparing modified fast in this manner, I would never do one for more than four weeks, six weeks in extreme cases. I have a better way or my preferred way, especially pay attention if you're over, say, 40 years old. And here's why. And it's really any age, but especially if you're over 40 years old. Extending a serious caloric deficit or any kind of a fast uh, can wreak havoc on your hormonal output, hormonal function. And that just wreaks havoc on anything. There's nothing positive that really comes out of that. And you know, I've experienced the detrimental effects of being in a cut too long for competition and having some of those hormonal side effects that I've had to really spend a lot of time rebuilding post-competition. Another reason why I decided to retire is I just really want to, didn't want to go through that shit anymore. So, but there are times where I'm going to want to still get leaned out for summer. I mean, at the end of the day, no matter what our goals are, no matter where we are in our lives, there's going to be those periods of time where we do want to look good. And there's nothing wrong with that, or at least as optimal as we can and still be able to perform well, which is kind of where I'm at right now. But at any rate, I sort of digress there. If the goal is to get peeled, you're in a cut, but you eventually, you know, ultimately find these periods of stalling out, then I like to throw in structured or strategic protein fasts. A protein fast is just a shortened version of a protein sparing modified fast, sort of wedged in to whatever your cutting macros are at the time. So let's say you have you know, a determined caloric ceiling as prescribed by your coach, or you've figured it out on your own, uh, doing your own research, whatever the case may be. And let's say you have determined, okay, this number of protein, this number of carbohydrate, this number of fat, 
in this caloric ceiling is going to be what I have calculated to be an energy deficit, but not too deep in order to consistently burn body fat and push me to my ultimate goal of being, you know, guys may say sub 10% or women may say, you know, sub, you know, 16, sub 20, whatever the case may be. Um, then, uh, you're going to continue those macros because that's an intelligently designed distribution of macros under a specific caloric ceiling to have you doing steady, consistent body fat reduction over time, but not too fast and start shutting down the hormonal production response, which is a bad thing. That's when that's like taking two steps forward and three steps back. We don't want to do that. However, if the goal, as it should be, is to retain as much lean mass as possible, not burn any off, and keep the body churning along, burning body fat as its primary fuel source in that deficit, then you can kind of fool the body to keep doing that and still keep hormonal production you know, as optimized as possible or as much as you can in a hard cut by throwing in a couple of protein days. Here's how it works. So what I would do is typically no more than two days a week. Some people just one, but no more than two days a week. And two days a week is typically what I would prescribe for most of my clients. And I would generally put those two protein fast days separated. I don't want to put them together because then you run that risk of, you know, going too deep uh, with low levels of fat intake and too deep on low levels of carb intake together and it could have adverse effects on hormonal production. Uh, so I would split them up. So let's just say hypothetically, um, you're going to be uh, not training legs or maybe back, not your big brutal workout days, but either an off day or a day that is not just a crushing gym day, like it might be an arm day, like it might be bicep tricep day, or it might be shoulder day or whatever. So let's just say you have, you know, an, one of your off days is Saturday and one of your lighter training days is Thursday. So then on Thursday and Saturday, I would insert two protein days. A protein day is a very elevated level of protein. So if you're, you know, maybe prescribing yourself or if your coach has prescribed you maybe, you know, 1.2, 1.25 or even up to 1.5 grams of protein per, bound, per pound of goal body weight or per pound of lean weight, whatever that calculation is, that's going to be a pretty elevated level of protein intake, which is fine. That's what I recommend. So you're going to continue to consume that high level of protein and you can even probably go beyond that. Okay. That's not a problem because the thermic effect of protein all the different variables that come to protein, the fact that protein doesn't really want to be used to be stored as body fat. It wants to be used for cellular, cellular repair, tissue repair, muscle growth, etc. It has a high satiety rating. So it's really good to, to pack in that protein on that protein fast day. And you might even elevate it as much as 10 to even 20% on those two days only. Because on those two days, you're going to bring your carbs into the basement if they're not already. Um, so if you're currently consuming 30 or 40 grams of carbs a day, bring it down to as low as possible, maybe 10 grams or less. If you're a hardcore carnivore and you're already doing 10 grams, you know, keep it there or even lower, but you're going to take your fat way down to under 30 grams. Okay. So if you're currently taking in 60, 70, 80, 100, 120 grams of fat, whatever that number is based on your genetics, your weight, your goals or whatever, your gender, um, you're going to bring that very, very low as well. So it's high protein, low carb, low fat. Um, you're going to do that for one day. Okay. That's not going to be your favorite day. It's going to be tough, especially if it's a training day, even if it's a lighter training day. Uh, but the fact is, is multiple days in a protein sparing modified fast can be really hard. You're going to feel like dog shit. Okay. You, you're going to feel like crap eventually, but just by using it two days a week, strategically inserted into your week, it's only one day. Most people survive that no problem and you're good to go. So you insert two days of a protein fast, high protein, low carb, low fat. Okay. Keeping that protein elevated and you're going to use whole food sources. Don't use a protein powder on that day. I have no problem with whey protein, especially if it's an isolate. Uh, but not on that day. You want to use whole 
food. That's going to be the best thing to really get your metabolism cranking and shift your body out of that dreaded plateau and get the thermostat reset and sprinkle a little gasoline on the fire. Okay. So whole food, you're going to do things like white fish, chicken breast, egg whites, super lean ground beef, ground turkey. These are the things you want to take in on that protein sparing modified fast or protein fast day. So that's going to be the deal there. Now, let's say hypothetically, if, if we're sticking to that Thursday, Saturday scenario in this particular example, the next day after your protein day, you're going to go back to your normal cutting macros that you were doing before. You're going to bring your fat back up to where it was, carbs adjusted to wherever you had it that's optimized for you. Uh, and if, you know, if you're using some carbs around training, you can go back to that. Everything goes back to normal. Protein goes back to whatever you had set. But this is going to be where you get your tiny little intermittent fast thrown in. On that day after your protein day, don't consume or break the fast from that night before until roughly 11 o'clock the next day. We're going to keep that body churning and burning through the time that you're sleeping at night, in through the morning, and then you're gonna break it around 11 o'clock. You can have black coffee and water uh, in that morning up to 11 o'clock, but that's it, okay? That's it, so that's how it works. This method, this hack to get shredded has never failed me. It's always worked, and because you're just inserting it two days a week, separated and broken up it's not crazy taxing because you know you only got to get through one day and then through a little bit of the next morning and then you go back to your normal cutting macros even though those two days kind of suck it is it it's justified because you're going to see things really start moving again that following day and on through the next couple of days until you insert that thing in there again I almost always do this with my competitors that I work with who are really trying to be peeled to the bone right before a competition. I've got a couple I'm working with right now, a, a couple who are literally, you know, a week or two out from the competition stage, a couple more that are, uh, you, know, you know, eight to 10 weeks out, and we st uh, we're already starting to insert them in, and the people that are super close to contest date have been doing them, and they've worked rather, rather well. So again, my fat loss hack to get shredded peeled to the bone is insert two for most protein fast days high protein low fat low carb for that one day either on a day off or on a day of you know slightly reduced intensity of training smaller body parts maybe and then you go to bed that night you wake up the next morning don't consume any food or any calories per se until roughly 11 o'clock the next day, but you can have black coffee and water uh, or an element pack. I think that'd be great too, coming off of that next morning. And then you resume your normal prescribed cutting macros that you have already determined. Resist the urge to do multiple days. More is not better. Just like doing multiple sets isn't better. Multiple hours in the gym is not better. Too low is not better. Too high is not better. It's not about how much or how little. It's about finding the precise amount required to gain the greatest result. So I recommend two protein fast inserted within the week, separated, and that's how I do it. So I just wanted to share that with you. Hopefully this is valuable for you. If it is and you dig this kind of crazy shenanigans, hit that subscribe button. Hit the little thumbs up guy. Share this with somebody you might uh, think might enjoy this sort of thing and uh i'll let you get back to your otherwise very productive day i appreciate you being here thank you again we just surpassed 4,000 subscribers i know it's not a big deal it's still just a drop in the bucket but i do appreciate you 4,000 loyal followers out there and i really really want to thank you for that and let's keep pushing this content share this with like-minded individuals. We wanna keep pushing that number up so we can share this and keep getting this information out there. Again, thank you for your support. Now turn this shit off, get outside, get some sun on your skin and enjoy your day. Train hard, diet harder, but whatever you gotta do otherwise, have a great day.
Peace.